Hi everyone and welcome back to another Mixed Media Tuesday. For today I will create a three-dimensional panel that will decorate my craft room and for that I will play with my resin again. I'm kind of obsessed lately. I absolutely love the results and, and how easy it is to play with molds and put uh, dimensional things together. I like to work with the amazing resin by Alumilite and that's just because it cures in uh, less than 10 minutes. It doesn't smell but you need to pay attention to the safety rules. Always wear gloves, you don't want to touch the resin with your bare skin and also make sure that you keep the windows open. I will go with a scale today because I'm using a paper cup which isn't transparent and I can't simply eyeball the amount of product that I have in each cup. So the molds that I'm going to play with today are from the Serve Vagabond collection by Stamperia. I will be using from this mold many of the gears. From this one I will be using the clock mechanism. And I'm going to bring in one more mold from the same collection, the Serve Vagabond one. And in uh, this mold I'm going to use this bulb. Now this mold is quite different than the previous ones. The first two ones were made from silicone. This is plastic but you can still use resin inside. The resin I'm using has two parts, part A and part B, and you need uh, the same amount of each part. Now I don't want to waste any product, so I'm going to mix enough so that I can uh, cover up the clock mechanism as well as the bulb, and then for the rest of uh, the product I'm going to pour in that mold that has lots of gears. And I'm going to use the gears in this project, and I have some left over from a previous pour as well. Notice that I am using a stick to help the liquid go exactly where I want it to go instead of going around the bottle and on my table. So this is a really good uh, tip. I'm going to repeat the same process with the other bottle, making sure that I have the same amount. And now I can mix those two liquids together. The moment you start stirring with your uh, wooden stick, you will find out that they become quite milky. And that's not too obvious in the video since I'm working on a white cup, but you will see it in real life and as you mix it up it will become clear again. That's when you know that you have mixed it up uh, enough. With the clear resin that um, cures in uh, 24 hours, you have to stir and stir to make sure that the two liquids are uh, uh, nice and mixed together. But with this resin, it is quite forgiving. You don't really have to measure the parts. You can just eyeball them. It is really quick to mix them together. Plus, it cures in no time. So this is why I love it so much. So I'm just uh, pouring now on my clock mechanism. And again, I'm using my wooden stick to help the liquid go exactly where I want it to go. Now, once I'm happy with that one, I will move on to the mold that has the bulb on top. And uh, I'm going to pour that as well. And then the rest of the product that I have left over goes on the mold that is full of gears. Using the wooden stick to make sure that uh, I help the liquid go exactly where I want it to go. I don't make a mess, so I have quite of a clean pour. However, if you feel like you have some over pouring, you can always use your stick and scrape it off, just like I'm doing here. And you will see that as I'm doing that, the bulb is coming together. It is curing really quickly. And you will see that the mechanism with the clock starts to cure as well. I'm going to leave those for 10 minutes. But you can also remove them the moment they become solid white. They are going to be quite pliable then, so you can even cut them with scissors or just bend them around your project. Now I did work quite quickly and I did make sure that my resin went all the way to the edges. You can see this isn't perfect, but I'm going to still work with that. I'm not going to pour any medium. I think it is going to be okay since this is a mixed media project and nothing has to be perfect. Unmolding the resin is a piece of cake. It's super easy to pop them out of those molds, whether they are the silicone ones or the plastic ones. The good thing is that now it is quite soft, so if you want, you can use your scissors to clean up the edges if there is some over pouring. When I mold my pieces, I like to bend the mold instead of the actual piece. I will also unmold the gears. And you can see I did some overpouring here, but this is not uh, an issue. I can easily 
cut out any excess. Do any cleanup that you need to do now that uh, the piece is quite uh, soft still, but once it uh, completely cures, it's going to harden up. So here are all the pieces that I have ready to go, and I do have some extra gears, bits and pieces from other pouring that I did in the previous week, which I'm going to bring in on this project as well. Now I want to have that bulb hanging from the top of my frame and that's why I went into my husband's things and I looked for a piece of cable. I am going to use the cable at the top of the bulb and uh, now that the resin is still soft I'm going to use my craft knife to create kind of a gap there so that I can easily secure the cable inside that hole. The resin is still soft and you can see I can easily make that gap there and the cable fits just fine. If you don't want to play with resin there are other ways to recreate something similar. For example you can use a chipboard die cut panel. This one is by Stamperia and it has tons of gears that you can use. However it is the thickness of a chipboard. It isn't a um, resin in a mold which has more dimension but you can definitely recreate something similar especially if you want to work for a flatter project now in my case I will use some of the circles the inside circles and I like to use bits and pieces from things that I have in my craft room to create something completely different so these ones the inside of those gears are going to be used on my project as if they are nails so I'm sticking them down on the four corners of my frame and you will see they will get a completely different look when everything is finished. And now I'm going to use gesso, black gesso. I will cover up completely my wooden panel and I will also cover up completely all the pieces that I created with resin. And again remember that you can recreate something similar even if you don't have the same molds or if you don't want to play with resin. For example you can use a real clock mechanism that you may find somewhere and you can even use a real bulb. And with the magic of video editing here are all the pieces ready to go. I did cover them up completely with black gesso, they are nice and dry now. And let's start putting things together. So I have this rice paper that I used on another project. This is a leftover, but it is a favorite of mine. I absolutely love it. You really don't need to do anything when you use this rice paper for your background. It has visual texture. You can get some real texture by sticking it down and having some crinkles here and there. I think that the design is great, especially for the project that I'm going for. So I did measure, mainly eyeballing, and then I'm going to cut it down to size. I can then stick it down, for that I'm using my matte medium, I'm going to apply a generous amount directly on top of my wooden panel, then place the rice paper on top and go over it with my brush again and matte medium. I don't mind if I have some crinkles, it's not perfect, trust me, you will see that in the finished photos, in the close-ups. It does have wrinkles, but that really adds to the finished look. Now it's time to put my bulb together, so for that I'm going to use my glue gun and just press them together until they are set. And the fun part about playing on a glass mat is that you can easily clean it from any type of medium. So you see here I do have some uh, melted silicone, but I can easily peel it off. Now I have my bulb ready to go with the cable attached and I'm going to bring in that chipboard with the die cut gears and I will try to find a gear that fits on this cable. And I know that it works on this one. I just want to have something at the top where this is going to hang from just to make it look more interesting. So you see here I can have it like that. However, I thought that this gear was quite small, so I'm going to switch to another one which is bigger and that's the one that I will be working with at the finished project. Just keep in mind that uh, not everything comes to me super quickly. I just play around with things, I audition different elements for my projects, but I always do video editing, so it looks really effortless and quickly how I put things together. But trust me, I don't do a project from start to finish in just 20 minutes. Now finally it's time to create my composition and stick everything down. You can stick them down by using the ultra thick uh, gel medium, 
You can also use any strong glue. And since I had that glue gun on my table ready to go, I thought why not use that? It is quicker and simpler. So you will see that I'm going to mix both those ways in different pieces. In terms of composition, I will try to have kind of a um, diagonal from one corner to the other, all my elements, plus the bulb hanging from the top. I also had this key from a previous pouring from another mold, so I thought it would be fun to use that on my clock as well. Now I want the bulb to be raised, so I need some gears to hold that at the top. I'm going to use my scissors to cut uh, the cable. And I will decide how long I want that cable to be. I'm just auditioning again and again, trying to decide what looks pleasing to the eye. I don't want everything to completely overlap, but I still want to have something connecting all the elements on my project. And this is where that gear I picked earlier is going to go at the top of my frame, so that the bulb is hanging from there. Of course, this is not the correct color. I'm going to cover it up completely and make it black. And you can see me here being lazy, using an acrylic black marker instead of using my black gesso, but that really doesn't matter. So my chipboard gear goes in place and now it gives a little hole for holding that uh, cable. And of course that's where I realized that the cable is still white, so I need to cover it up with gesso. And I'm going to place it down again, I used my hot glue gun here. Now everything is black on black and you can't really tell the details, but uh, the finished touch where I will be doing the dry brushing is going to bring everything to life. So I'm going to continue with the composition, again keeping in mind that I want to create kind of a diagonal from one corner to the top right corner. So I'm going to play around with the rest of the gears that I have on hand and try to decide where I want those to go. And now finally it's time to do the coloring. You will see that nothing comes so natural. You can go again and again on top of what you are coloring until you are happy with the result. I'm starting with a mix of yellow and off-white vanilla color. This is acrylic paint by the way. I am using the Vivace line by Stamperia just because it has a shine finish on it. And I'm going to start coloring the bulb, the main bulb, with that. Now, one thing that you can do is, instead of using the resin that I worked with, you can use clear resin. It does dry in 24 hours, but the next day you will have a clear bulb that looks pretty much the same as the real one. However, I am too impatient to do that in the previous day. I just have to go ahead and do the idea that I have on my mind at that specific time, and I can never work with clear resin. But just keep that in mind. So first I added my first layer, then I went on top of it with vanilla. Now I didn't like it again, so I'm going with yellow again on top of that. Don't be afraid of color, just play layers of acrylic paint one on top of the other. Didn't hurt anyone until you're happy with the result. You can always use black gesso as an eraser and start from the beginning. Now here I'm going to use copper metallic acrylic paint and uh, this has a lovely shine on it. You can go with wax if you like to do that. I'm going to do dry brushing at the detail of the lamp. I'm making sure that my brush is completely dry and I will go over the lamp as well as the rest of the elements. This technique works like magic, bringing all those details into life. It makes you look as if you know exactly what you're doing, but trust me, just the brass going over those elements. Just make sure that the brass is completely dry and you don't load it too much with uh, acrylic paint. But again, try to don't be afraid. If you add too much paint and it doesn't look good, then just go over it with black gesso and start over. Trust me, it's a really fun technique and you will have so much fun. Now I'm going to bring in another metallic color, and this is silver. Again, I'm going to use the same brush, making sure that it is completely dry. And I will go over it here and there, adding those details on the gears. Notice that in this project I didn't do a lot of work on the background. I was really happy with how that background looked. The rice paper did all the work for me, and I didn't even add splashes which is kind of strange for me. And that's where I didn't like how the cable is looking. 
So I'm going back on top of that, doing the dry brushing technique, but this time with black gesso. And I thought that it would be better to go over the light bulb with that copper color as well, to make it look warmer. Now I will touch up the frame as well, uh, just again by using the, those two colors, the silver and the copper one. I am going around it, not adding too much again, just a touch, dry brushing the gear there at the top of the bulb, as well as bringing all those details on the frame to life. You will see that uh, those uh, nails on the corners do come to life the moment I go over them with the brush. And if you want to make your bulb look more realistic, you can go over it with a glaze. I'm using here just my glossy accents, which I'm going to apply with a brush. One of the questions that I get a lot is, uh, how did I come up with that idea? Now, I like to start from a quote, and the quote for this project was, so many ideas, so little time, which is kind of my daily problem, since I have so many things that I want to create, and I don't have enough time, especially not enough time, to video edit everything that I want to make. So in this project, I go mainly with the quote. So the quote says, so many ideas, and the ideas is represented with the bulb, so little time, and you can see all the mechanisms. You can leave it as it is, or if you want, you can actually add the quote. I'm going for a quote, I always like to add one on my mixed media projects, whether they are canvases or art journals. And for that, I'm using the Retro Alphabet by Waffle Flower. It has been released a couple of months ago, and it is my absolute favorite and my go-to alphabet lately. And I didn't video edit that part where I am playing with the letters to see what is more pleasing to the eye. You can go up and down if you want, or you can go in a completely straight line, which is what I chose to go with for this project. I completed the quote by printing out the rest of the phrase on my printer. And you can see here some close-up photos on the finished project. It's so dimensional, it's nice and shiny, you can see all the details, and I'm absolutely in love with it. This is going directly on my wall of my craft room. You will find the full list of everything I used, the link down below in the description area, here on YouTube as well as on my blog. I hope that you had fun today, that you got inspired. Thank you all so much for visiting. Don't forget to like the video, to subscribe if you haven't done so already, and make sure to leave me a comment. Thank you all so much, and I'll see you all next time.